If you're a student, an employee with a new company, or just a lifelong learner, you're going to find that there are two critical components to studying effectively. They are, for one, knowledge retrieval. In other words, being able to easily get answers to questions you may have about a certain topic or a piece of content that you're consuming. And the other one is knowledge retention. In other words, being able to test yourself, testing whether you've remembered something properly. So you can reproduce it on a test, or if you need certain information on the job, obviously you want to make sure that what you have in your head is accurate. Umata and Wisdolia are two AI-based tools that can help us get to that point faster. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate them to you because I've been using them for a couple of weeks now, and I'm pretty impressed. Let's dive in and see how they work. All right, starting us off with Umata. And as you can see here on their tagline, it's about asking anything to AI about your file, speaking to your documents like ChatGPT, but has a similar user experience. When it comes to pricing, there is a free version which you can try, which has up to 60 pages. So you can test whether it works for you well with a document of your choice. Though I always recommend not uploading anything that contains too sensitive information because you never know where your data may end up. They do have a privacy policy for you to read through and see how comfortable you are with how they potentially handle your data. But in this video, I'm only going to use a public facing resource with no potential consequences if anything were to leak. Here you can see the back end of the Mata tool. As you can see, there's an overview of your files. For now, I just have one. You can just upload it from here, select a PDF. It will process it relatively quickly. Of course, it depends on the amount of pages, for example, how large the file is. But this one is about 30 to 40 pages and it processes within a couple of seconds. So it shouldn't really take too long at all. First, let's have a look at the root document, which is actually a blog post on the Kinsta website, which is a great resource if you want to learn anything about WordPress or web development. I chose this because I am somewhat familiar with this subject myself, so I could easily verify whether the information presented by the AI tool is accurate. As you can see, they have an option to save it as a PDF with ease, which was another reason I chose this source for this video. I'm not going to go through the entire article, but you can see it's pretty long. It has images, it has text, it has instructions. So there's plenty of ways we can test how these tools work, plenty of information for these tools to base on. So you can expect a elaborate answer rather than a quick snippet of potentially inaccurate text. So let's give this a shot. I've already uploaded the PDF here and I'm going to press ask. This is about the Yoast SEO plugin for WordPress SEO. Yeah, what is SEO? Let's start with that. If you're not familiar with it, let's ask, what is SEO? It takes a couple seconds to process the question, read through the document and get an answer. And here we have our first answer. It stands for search engine optimization, the practice of optimizing your website and its content to increase the quantity and quality of traffic to your site for organic search engine results through various techniques. And it even cites where it got the information from. I can confirm that what it's saying here is accurate. But if I now go to the description marked in yellow as the source, it's not necessarily explaining what is the core of SEO. So I found this one a bit strange, but overall the answer is accurate. Now let's give it a bit more of a challenging question. We can ask it, for example, what is cornerstone content? That's a bit more niche. So again, it takes a couple seconds. And here we are. The core of a website, the best, most important articles or pages that a website owner wants to rank highest in the search engines. And again, it provides the same sources in this example. But indeed, we can now see that cornerstone content is the core of your website. So it takes it from the article directly. and We can confirm through the sourcing that it is indeed what it says it is. So it does reflect what the source of the document is saying, whether that is accurate. I mean. The document should be accurate in the first place, but that is why I chose this post to verify whether it's correct or whether it produces these AI hallucinations, as they're called, which are still a somewhat common occurrence where an AI just invents an answer. So far, I haven't seen that happen with this tool, which is a good thing. We can scroll down. There's a lot more to cover. Let's ask it about, can I configure breadcrumbs? These are basically these paths that show you what web page you're on and whether they're part of a hierarchy of sorts. But let's see what the tool says. Here we are. 
Yes, I can configure breadcrumbs in Yoast SEO. They are to be found in the advanced tab. We may need to add a small code snippet to my theme, etc. And again, we go to the sourcing. And again, it's not entirely accurate in that it also takes into account the archives tab here. But if we scroll down, you can see that breadcrumbs are indeed covered in this article and the instructions are given here. So the answer is indeed accurate. Let's ask it one more question. What can I get with the premium version of the Yoast SEO plugin? And here we get an answer that explains we can get a premium analysis, related key phrases, social previews, and a couple others. Again, we can go through the sourcing, but at this point, I think you get the point. It just reads through the document instead of you having to read through it manually and retrieve information in that way. So it's a lot quicker than reading through the whole thing. Hopefully this will save you some time. And if you're a student, you can potentially upload your textbooks in here as PDFs, your articles, your scientific articles, and just keep verifying what it says. But I can confirm that on this example, it's giving very good, accurate answers that are actually just taken from the root source instead of inventing extra information. So that's good. That's what Umata can do for you. Again, very straightforward, very simple. Just uploads your files in here, press ask, and there you have it. A simple user experience that is conversational. Now that we've covered information retrieval, let's look at information retaining. For this, we're going to use a different tool and it's a Chrome extension that you can use for free. It's called Wisdolia. At its core, what it does, it generates flashcards based on the contents of the page it's currently viewing with Chrome. Flashcards are, as you can see, quick questions, quick prompts with a question for you to answer to test whether you can accurately reproduce information that is to be found on this page. And the cool thing is that these flashcards are created on the spot through AI, so you don't have to do anything for it. On this page, it was able to generate 30 flashcards in total. So let's see how it works. What is the purpose of using Yoast SEO on WordPress? We learned that actually in an earlier part of this video when we asked Yomada about it, optimize your website's performance on search engine. And with Yoast, that makes it easy to configure. So let's see if we got that right. I guess so. To improve the search engine rankings of your pages, I tend to waffle a bit. So this is a better short form version of this Q&A. Now what we can do is actually save this flashcard if we want to train ourselves on this question in the future. And the cool thing is that when you save it, you don't even need to open the original web page any longer. It's just saved to your personal Wistolia library. So I'm going to ignore this other option for now, but I'm going to just press Wistolia is good with me. Press save. And here we go. Now it is saved. Let's move on to the next one. What are some of the main sections covered in the beginner's guide to Yoast SEO? Now, this is an interesting one because to me, this is not as useful if I am focusing on the subject matter, right? So AI here is basing it more on the structure of the article rather than the contents of the article. So probably, or let's press reveal answer to see, properly entering information in the wizard, et cetera. Yeah. So this is just more of the layout, the structure of the article rather than the contents. So if I am studying this subject, I can just skip this flashcard. I'm not going to save it. And that's okay. Again, AI is doing this, so it doesn't necessarily know what we're going for. But this one perhaps is again, more subject matter related. How can you access the Yoast SEO dashboard after installing the plugin? Well, I believe it is accessible through the sidebar in the WordPress admin panel. Let's see. By clicking on the Yoast SEO tab in the WordPress admin area. Okay. Similar enough. What's the first time configuration process for Yoast SEO calls? Probably not a super helpful answer. We can skip it. We don't have to save this. What is the purpose of the SEO data optimization section in the configuration wizard to improve any technical issues on your site? This one I would say is pretty useful. Again, if you're studying, if you want to really hammer this information home, so let's save it. Let's save it to Wisolia. Want to save all 30 cards? No, I definitely do not. And so that's what I recommend is to carefully curate the cards that it creates for you, because as you've seen, not all of them are going to be equally useful. So let's now go to the Vistolia settings to see whether it's all in order. Embed the generate flashcards button at the bottom of articles. You can have this turned on if you wish. I just mostly use the extension, but if you do have it turned on, we can see that it also 
works by just clicking here at the bottom. This will be embedded in the website in any page where Wisdolia operates. I've turned this on, but it's optional. Let's go back to the settings. I will ignore Anki for now. You're currently on the free plan, but you can upgrade, which will allow you to save unlimited pages per PDF, unlimited videos, and unlimited flashcard generations per month. Whereas the free version, which I'm testing now, has a cap on that, but it's easy to upgrade to Super Learner for getting all these limitations removed. Now, if you scroll down on Wistolia, you can actually go to My Saved Cards. And here we can start seeing the result of what we just did. If we press this menu, we can see that the two flashcards we saved are now present and can be just gone through in a queue. Now imagine this times 10, times 100, times 1,000. Imagine how useful this can be to train yourself in retaining any information you've captured on the web that you want to start storing and being able to remember in your head, or at least test whether what's in your head is still accurate. That's why I think this can become really useful. You can save this into different categories. You know, you can create separate WordPress categories as this example is about, and then any other subjects. Really, really helpful, really simple to use, all AI based. So it does a lot of the heavy lifting for you and you can just go on your way and focus on learning. I hope this video got you excited to use one or both of these tools. This video is not sponsored. I only review tech that I find genuinely interesting or potentially helpful for others, which is why I'm sharing them in videos like these. Subscribe if you want to see more of this type of content and let me know in the comments if you want to see me cover more AI technology. I've been careful not to jump on the AI hype train too early, but I have been following it very, very closely. And obviously there's rapid development going on in this space with new tools being released seemingly every hour or so. So there's still a lot more to cover. And I want to make sure that I promote tools that I think are actually useful, that have a potential longevity so that if you do commit to them, you won't find yourself losing all your data in just a couple months. Again, nothing's hundred percent sure in this time and age with AI development, but I have found these to be super helpful, not just for myself, but with others as well. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.